you want to introduce us this time? Yeah, sure, why not? Go on then. Hello and welcome to Lesson 3 of the UKP umpiring videos. Today we're going to look at dangerous riding, I think, Chris. Yep, so we're going to look at some, uh, some sandwiching and wedging as well to go with our dangerous riding. But we've had a question in, Ian. And we've had one off Jack Brown. Uh, some know some people might know him as a Kent A grader. We know him as a budding umpire. Yes, he's indeed. so he's so much into his umpire. He only really plays as a bit of a side thing. But we've had a question from Jack Brown, and the question was Ian. He's asked why can't a number one take a penalty two when it's coming out of their defending area? And I know that's a bit of a, a bit of a, a mind thing. So we've got a bit of a diagram here, and Ian. So you're this red number three, that's what we're looking yep. at. And Could you explain been, a bit more please? So red number three has been awarded a penalty two. So um, it's going to be a foul in the area and the umpire's going to have said move it up to the 30 yard line. And the red number three will normally come out and take that penalty. Um, and what Jack's asked is, given that the rule book seems to imply that a penalty two is taken from a spot in midfield, why can a number one or even the number two not take that penalty rather than the number three having to come out and clear the area with it? But I think, Chris, actually, if we look at the rule closely here, actually the way it's worded, that's not quite true, is it? It's not actually in midfield for that scenario. Yeah, so we've got to take this note at the bottom. It talks about a number one going into their attacking area and it says they can't shoot their goal from that penalty spot. So if we, look at, uh, if we look at that or take that rule as they're in midfield when they're going into their goal scoring area, I think we could deduce the same from the number three being in their defending area and they take it going into midfield. So that's why we're forced to let someone else, Jack, carry the ball apart from you. And uh, we're forced to that number three to um, take that penalty too. Uh, the other question we've had in Ian is talking about our miss shot at goals. And we've been asked, is a miss shot at goal after that? What penalty is that? Is it a penalty one? Is it a penalty two? What happens after a miss shot at goal? So this is quite an interesting one because actually um, it's not described in the rule book as a penalty one or a penalty two. In fact, traditionally, it's not really been considered a penalty. Um, but actually, if you do look in the rule, but it does say the defence number three shall be given a penalty throw on the penalty line at a position in direct line from where the ball crosses the back line. Um, at, so that's different to any other penalty. And um, part B, the attack number one player on the opposing side must follow up defence number three horse's nose to hip. Um, is also different because traditionally any attack player would have to be 10 metres away. So it is a little bit different. It's not described as a one or a two. Um, what is interesting about it is also that it doesn't carry over at the end of a chucker, which does seem a bit strange given the rule book says elsewhere that all penalties should carry over. Uh, so that might be something we actually need to, to, to query with the IPC at some point to check whether why, why that's worded that way. But it's not described as a penalty one or a penalty two in the rule book specifically. It's just a penalty. Let's get on to the actual uh, crux of today, our dangerous riding, sandwiching and wedging. So if we have a look at the dangerous riding rule, and we've had a few changes this year, Ian, what are they please? So within the UK Polo Cross Association, we did review the rule book as executive umpires um, end of last year, beginning of this year, and it did seem to us a little bit unclear why our dangerous riding rules there was the options to give penalties one, two or three, when elsewhere in the rule book it states that any dangerous any dangerous play should result in a penalty four. So the rule book's been tidied up to make it clear that actually for dangerous riding we will be looking at a penalty four straight away. And and you know that makes sense because actually for any dangerous play or dangerous riding it does seem a bit silly sometimes that actually someone can commit what is frankly quite a dangerous foul and um, the reward for the other team is they get a 10 metre throw for maybe the 30 yard line going into the area. Yeah so we've just basically elevated the, um, the penalty so it's made it hopefully less appealing for anyone out there um, but sort of looking we'll just break down some of these rules and go for a couple of them. Part A bumping at a dangerous angle so this is the angle that someone would be coming in for a ride off and um, we will have a look at a World Cup game and uh, against Ireland, the UK from 2019. And if we have a look at Webby coming back out, that's the UK number three here. As he makes a turn, we see that Ireland number two comes in at a bit of an angle. 
there. And uh, there used to be a bit of a myth that it was 45 degrees, Ian. What can you tell us about that? It doesn't actually say 45 degrees in the rule book. It just says bumping angle, dangerous to a player or their horse. I think what we used to say was an angle below 45 degrees was considered generally to, to not be dangerous. It doesn't mean it won't be dangerous. Um, and I think um, it, it does very much depend also probably on the speed that you're traveling at. And I think as a sport, you know, it, it's one of those things that we've moved more and more to the, to the you know, the safety of the horses and the, and the, and the players and, the, and, you know, the players must be engaging safely and pushing rather than coming in and making that initial hit at a dangerous angle. So we're on uh, B here. We are going to look at this in a lot more detail in the next video. Um, but this is essentially very closely linked to crossing rule. So pulling across in front or behind another horse dangerously. So we'll do all of B next time. And we're looking at C, Ian. What can you tell us about C? So C is a rule that um, basically states that when you're making a ride off on a horse, you must, you must make contact initially and then push rather than coming in with sufficient force to actually move the horse off its line of travel initially. And you used to get this a lot, and it used to be allowed to happen. It was very commonplace. But you know, you would put in a big hit and you would almost aim to move the horse sideways with that initial hit. And now obviously, safety players and horses, quite rightly, we say actually you must engage and then push. Yeah, so if you have a look at a uh, Cotswold game, and uh, Bethesda Bulls, we see the uh, Laura Scott on the grey horse, just taking a bit of contact there, and you see uh, Laura's horse there, uh, front end moves across, so we would say that actually that contact has moved Laura's horse from that line of travel that uh, she was going on, and that's dangerous. It's that initial contact that moves them off their line, that's the one that's considered dangerous. Um, even if the ride off was less than 45 degrees angle, even if they've come in in every other aspect correctly is that initial force that's the problem so on to d what can you tell us about d then Ian? um so this is basically about where you push against the horse so horses when they push against each other should be shoulder to shoulder pretty much normally particularly if you're going in the same direction down the pitch and you're sort of moving right off it's a little bit different in the, in the area where perhaps would be a bit more stationary but when you're going down the pitch for a ride off you want to have your horses shoulder to shoulder and what we're truly saying is that you know that's got to be the case you can't have your shoulder into the horse's loins and pushing behind the saddle or anything like that because that again is dangerous and you're going to cause the horse to lose its back end yeah so for those that don't know where the horse's loins or god help you neck is uh basically the loins are anywhere behind that saddle obviously the neck's fairly self-explanatory but we're looking at our horse's shoulder basically riding off anywhere in that green zone on this horse there so if you're riding off anything further behind one you're not really effective in a ride off and two you're considered dangerous so we need to keep your eye on that as well we've not got too many videos of the next two with e and f but could you talk us for a little bit on e then Ian? what does that mean so e is is pretty self-explanatory to be fair all this is saying is that actually when time is off, called off by the umpire, you cannot continue to, to ride into another player and ride them off or do anything, you know, it's, it's not needed and, it, and it's against the rules to actually carry on that contact while time is off. Yeah, so if, if there's a, the whistle goes but time's still on, that's perfectly fine. So let's say there's a down hit and we are, we're carrying on marking up those players as they move it upfield. That's fine because the time is still running. Where there's an issue is if time's off, that's when you've got to stop marking that player. Uh, F, hopefully, I don't think I've ever seen this I've, one. I have never seen I'm intrigued how this got into the rule book. Why, who was doing I've, this? I've heard <laughs> Seymour Smith, who used to play for Arden, took both hands off his reins once to try and defend the goal. Uh, and put his arms up but and got I, the goal given against him. But I, but I have heard that only as a rumour. <laughs> but acceptable horse contact. Ian, what would you class as acceptable horse contact? Now, you've already mentioned the shoulder to shoulder, yeah. but what's the button part talking about? Um, this is this is primarily, you normally get this in the area or perhaps close to the 30-yard line where horses are a bit more stationary and static and players are trying to manoeuvre around each other. Basically what it's saying is that you can have two horses facing in opposite, di opposite directions and sort of pushing against each other. So sort of like one shoulder against the other one back end and vice versa but they've got to be truly parallel. 
So you can't have one horse angled in and pushing into the hind quarters of the other one or anything like that. Yeah, as soon as as soon as one of them uh, that uh, sorry one of the players ends up changing their angle, you end up getting into the territory of uh, hitting behind the horse's loins or on the neck, and that's where you'd end up blowing them on part D. But as long as they're parallel, there's no particular issue there. They can side pass into each other as much as they like. Rule 47, sandwiching and wedging, Chris. What can you tell us about this rule? I can tell you that we've we've had a change this year. Uh, similar to the dangerous riding, um, just taking out the penalties one, two, and three, and uh, making it sort of mandatory that it must be four, six, or seven. So feel free to send them off forever if it's a bad one. Absolutely. But just because it's a dang- this class is dangerous riding, it's just elevating those penalties because it makes more sense. We don't want to see them in the game, so let's make the penalties a little bit harsher. But what's the difference between a sandwich and a wedge, Ian? Should we be worried about that? Not really, no. No. Great. So, with uh, sandwiching, the difference is for those that are interested, but it's the same penalty, so don't get too worried if you can't name which is which. But if we have a look at this first diagram, the idea is sandwiching is contact on that middle horse from both sides. So it won't necessarily move the horse off their line. It's not even a huge impact, but it is contact on both sides. Did you do these drawings yourself, Chris? I didn't. This is a Barry Amor special. Ah. Who uh, It's in the presentation for those that have witnessed it with the 400 plus slides, I believe it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's not short, but it is comprehensive. So taking off that is contact on both sides and it will earn you now penalty four, six or seven. So back on a World Cup game here, Ian, what yep. can you tell us about this game? Well, this is Ireland versus the UK, which is always quite an interesting occasion. Here we go, a little free throw, bam. Beautiful Irish sandwich there. It is. Well, well that's it's actually a UK, a UK it's sandwich. It's a UK sandwich. It's, it's got an Irish, Irish flavour in the middle. Yeah, so what this can also look like sometimes, we've not got a video of it, but when one player is marking up, and the second player comes in to maybe tackle that that middle player, it's that last player that makes contact that's causing the sandwich. I have seen people sandwich their own teammates. Yep, yep. Still a foul. Especially if they're trying to uh, peel off a player. Uh, That happens uh, semi-regularly as well, so it's just something to keep an eye on. It is not always necessarily um, one team against another. It can be on your own team. Uh, if we have a look on this diagram on wedging, wedging is not always contact both sides. So looking at that sandwiching, uh, sorry, looking at rule 47, it talks about rapid deceleration. So even if you don't necessarily force the player, uh, uh, sorry, if you hit the player on both sides, it can just be that rapid deceleration. So Ian, what can you show us about this one? Yeah, so we're going to see this coming up in a minute with a, with a grey horse, I think with Jason Webb on it, and he just comes back round and there's two Australian players and they basically cut him off in front and um, he's got nowhere left to go. And as the ball carry with the line of the ball, you can see there, it's just a dangerous situation to end up in. Yeah, so he's caused that rapid deceleration. They cut down their, uh, their path to run, and that's caused that dangerous wedging. What would you give them there? What penalty? Well, now I'd give them a penalty four. Would you? That's good of you. Anyway, if you've made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Thank you. And again, send any questions you like into Ian. Jack really didn't listen to me, he sent it to me. But any questions to Ian, not me, that would be great. And uh, what are we going to do next time, Ian, do you know? I think, aren't we looking at crossing? You said that like a question. Crossing and lining the ball next time, so it sure be a fun one. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see you all again. Bye. Bye.